Now, Carrie, your next guest oh, yes. is also Joanne, Dr. Joanne Ferreira. <laughs> and I know Saka Fett, but I don't know if that's the part where we speak here in Trinidad and Tobago. Right, or if it's um, specifically from another Saint region. Lucia because, or Dominica. Yeah, because again, um, with any language, there'd be certain dialects. Yes. And, um, you know, it, it speaks to the specific history and culture of that country. Uh -huh. And I'm very excited to chat this morning with Dr. Joanne Ferreira. Uh, she's the Senior Lecturer of Linguistics and the Coordinator for Portuguese and Brazilian Studies at the University of the West Indies. Good morning. Bonjour, Carrie. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. Comment are you? Yes, um, I'm, I'm doing very well, thank you. When Merci. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know a few French words, that's it, but mm -hmm. when it comes to Patois, mm -hmm. I don't know so much. Well, now, you, know, you know plenty. What's that? You know plenty. Why would you say so? Because our folklore, our festivals, our flora, our fauna, our food, we have so much patois flowing through our linguistic DNA in this country. It's amazing. Definitely. And as I was speaking earlier, um, you know, it's, there's a deep-rooted history of patois and how it came to be, you know, um, considering the hands that change, um, you know, be, uh, uh, this, this country, Trinidad mm -hmm. and Tobago, uh, the hands that has changed from the uh, Spanish to the French to the British. And uh, then there's this um, melange of language that came together to form Patois. Right. Now, how prevalent is Patois still in, in the Caribbean? In the Caribbean, it's actually the first language of CARICOM, if we put it that way, because Haiti alone has between 8 to 12 million speakers um, wow. of French Creole, which is the I suppose the technical linguistic way of calling Patois. Right. Um, and that includes Haitians in the diaspora in um, North America and Europe. And of course, there's, I mean, there's Martinique, Guadeloupe, French Guyana, um, St. Lucia, Dominica, Trinidad, Venezuela, Grenada, um, and anywhere, anywhere that borders. Even in Brazil, there's, there's, there's Patois being spoken there. So is it the same patois or they or they different dialects they're different dialects okay so it's uh, uh, we would say it's one language because there's some um intercomprehension um but sakafet is what i learned when i met martinicans right Saufe, um could be from martinique and here as well sac passe i think that's pretty well known um, because of white love jean other <laughs> right. other people yes. um who, uh, some haitian singers but it's, it's really the number one language of CARICOM and the second language of the Caribbean. Um, Eng English speakers and English Creole speakers like to think we are number one um, because we have 17 countries that speak English officially. Right. Um, and only Haiti speaks French Creole officially. Um, but there's Spanish, first of all, then French Creole, and then us. But in, in CARICOM alone, as I say, um, the number one. Yeah, so CARIFESA, which should have been the number one language. Right. So. So uh, how prevalent is it still in Trinidad and Tobago, though? In terms of fluency and native speakers, um, the population is aging. Um, my colleagues and I, we found Patwa speakers all over the country. Everybody knows about Paramin. Paramin is like the right. Mecca, the last big bastion of, of French Creole, Patwa, Patwa. in Trinidad. Yeah. Um, but there's Salparo, there's Moruga, there's Blanchiches, there's Arima, there's Pitti Valley, there's Cameron. There's Mayaru. It's literally all over the island. And as you rightly said, the uh, Patwa, you know, it's an, the Patwa-speaking population is aging. Like my grandfather used to speak Patwa, my but unfortunately, yeah. um, we weren't taught Patwa yeah. growing up. Um, I think that's most, of, most of us have that story. Yeah, so how, how um, do we bring it back? You know, how, how do we make it more mainstream? Well, we don't really think, um, because our language starts at the, at the, in the womb, in the cradle, I mean, it's kind of hard to go into people's homes and tell them, hey, <laughs> speak Patwa only to your right. children, so make sure that that's their first language. But it can be a really vital uh, regional language, language of the Caribbean. It's already a regional, it's the biggest regional language of France. So France has number, uh, a number of regional languages, and, and Patwa is the, is the biggest, three million speakers in France. All right. Um, so how we can do it is by raising awareness. Um, thank you for having us today. Oh yes, uh, thank you for being here. Um, and uh, having, like, this month is Creole month, so this is my little tribute to um, the Madras fabric, you know, that's, yes. that's well known across the Caribbean. Um, we have Creole month going on, this is International Creole Month, International Creole Days on Monday. Um, Salparo just had their Patois Mass, Petit Valley had a Patois Mass, Paramin is having their Patois Mass and festivities, the Alliance Francaise is, is chipping in, UE, of course, is chipping in. Um, and, uh, 
And yes. you're also celebrating the 150th anniversary of John Jacob Thomas's The Theory and Practice of Creole Grammar. We are so proud. <laughs> we are so proud that Trinidad and Tobago, uh, in spite of, okay, you know, we call people who speak French francophone and francophonie would be the, the, the regions that speak French. So we have creolophonie, and really we should be part of that. Um, so 150 years ago, this country produced the very, very, very first scientific um, linguistic French Creole yeah. grammar. Uh, it, there was an alphabet written, um, there were uh, grammatical structures explained, um, proverbs, riddles, jokes, translations mm -hmm. from the New Testament, from Aesop's fables. It's online for free in, right. uh, in, um, the, the, because it's so old now. But he was, John Jacob Thomas was a school teacher in Savannah. And he realized that most of his students and his students' parents in 1869 and that era could not speak English. And there had been a big anglicization campaign to make English, well, the language of, an, of a British colony. Um, but he decided to let people know that Papa was a language. And then he called it Creole, um, which is still called, of course. And, uh, he, and also because there were people in the courts who had problems. When they went to the courts, there weren't necessarily um, Patwa interpreters right. on right. hand. Dr. Joanne Ferreira, unfortunately, we're going to have to cut it short because we are at the top of the hour and we need to take a break for the news at the top. We'll continue this conversation offset, though, when we go up to the TTT News Center with Dion Batiste Clark with the News at 7. Thank you very much. All right, welcome back, everybody. This is our number two of the Now Morning Show right here on TTT, also on Talk City 91.1 FM. I'm streaming live on Facebook, wherever you are in the world, at TTT Live Online. Now I'm continuing my conversation with Dr. Joanne Ferreira, who is the Senior Lecturer of Linguistics, as well as the Coordinator, Portuguese and Brazilian Studies at the University of the West Indies. Now we're speaking about this uh, fantastic milestone that we have reached the 150th anniversary of the... Theory and Practice of Creole Grammar by John Jacob Thomas. That's correct. And so I just to um, wrap what we were speaking about, the um, huge, huge accomplishment, uh, you know, like the groundwork that he has done 150 years ago in regards to the language. As I was mentioning, he was really concerned about the two things that affect minoritized speakers the most, education and the legal system. So because they were not accepted within the legal system, um, no provisions were made for the interpreting, and education was difficult because it was all in English. Uh, he went about writing this French Creole grammar so that people would understand its significance and importance. And he had actually further plans to do a cross comparison with other French Creoles around the world, including Mauritius and Reunion, and um, all across the world. So it's a, it was an international focus as well. And yes, definitely. And now we've reached this milestone here. And celebrating. We, and we have another that. milestone that um, Professor Lawrence Carrington, he got the Shaconia Gold one of the recipients of the Shikoni Gold in 2019 for his work in language and development. Wow. And he was one of the people pioneering the modern standardized French Creole alphabet and orthography across the Lesser Antilles. And that is, you know, wonderful coming right here from Trinidad and Tobago yeah. so yeah. much. But we're, we're big in the Patois dance. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so I understand you have um, three events coming up in regards to um, Creole Month 1 and the um, Patois itself. Tell us about them. Paramin, of course, at the forefront as always. On uh, Sunday the 27th at 9 o'clock, there'll be the Mass in Paramin, Our Lady of Guadalupe, followed by Creole festivities, remembering Patois Day, Creole Day. Right afterwards at 2 o'clock at the Alliance Francaise in Alcazar Street in Port of Spain, there'll be a panel discussion, um, typical drumming, belle uh, demonstrations, uh, a French Creole cocktail at the end, and at UWE on the 31st, on Thursday at 10 o'clock, um, there'll be some films, but the main event starts at 1 o'clock in the Center for Language Learning Auditorium, where we have Professor Carrington, Professor Burton, a uh, well-known historian, Professor Robertson, also at the forefront of Creole Day in Trinidad, um, and uh, our students doing posters and other activities. And um, we also have Dr. Travis Weeks from St. Lucia, who is doing a Walcott play an excerpt from a Derek Walcott, of course, a St. Lucian who spoke French Creole, spoke Patois, um, translated into Patois. All right, so we have a lot, lot of stuff going on. A lot and to look forward to yeah, from we'd the like to invite the public to come to all And these are all three events. events? All three. All I'm three. not sure about the Alliance. I have to check. Okay, well. But um, it's on Facebook. Yes, definitely. So you just need to go on Facebook and check that out. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning, Dr. Joanne Ferrer, Senior Lecturer of Linguistics 
and coordinator of Portuguese and Brazilian studies at the University of yes, the West Indies. <laughs> I, will, I will learn, I will learn. <laughs> Can you speak any Patois, Kari? No, uh, Saka Fetsu, you know. <laughs> oh, you got that from <laughs> me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but is that, dog, is that Patois that we speak here? Saka Fetsu, yeah, Moela, uh, do you speak Patois? I, I, I read you know and write it a lot better than I speak it. Ah, okay. okay. Um, but Saufe, Saka Fet, Moela. Um, <laughs> Moela and when last is I'm tired. No message, Joan, we're sorti petty valley. Ah, when um, upon it, 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 where I don't you eat. I can tell them, I can, I, I have survival part, okay. <laughs> but my reading and writing is really good. Okay, so yeah. we need to find some classes. I think I our head of production and operations, Shamilia Thomas, is doing some part classes, so maybe she could teach us. Yeah, you know, so pass it on. <laughs> <laughs> We're always fascinated with Patois, and we 